Greetings, one and all. It is I, Paul the Producer, and you are watching the one and only Copy Who. Is it the one and only, really, when this is a... When this is a gratuitous copying amalgam of all sorts of influences? Can't feel bad about any of that. I'm even gratuitously copying. I was like, I'm gonna wear this. The only thing about this top and this shirt I'm wearing that is not a gratuitous copy is this white shirt here. Because if this were really the full gratuitous copy that I'm saying it is, this would be a Taylor Swift shirt. And that's a clue for those of you who know who I'm copying. Yes, I'm just going to start trying to dress like him too. And not even because I like this outfit necessarily. In fact, there are some frilly, stupid frilly sweater things that he wears that I wouldn't be caught fucking dead in. And I wouldn't be caught dead wearing Taylor Swift uh, either. So I'm wearing a music t-shirt. As you can see, these are all like, this was a $5 t-shirt that I ordered some years ago off of, off of Amazon. And it's, it's so cool because the, f the fabric is so soft on this shirt. And it had a little hole in the armpit because of course it's a $5 cheap shirt. And so I took it over to my mother, my, my fair mother. And I said, mother, would you please copy or no, excuse me. Not copy. Would you please repair the hole in this t-shirt? Could you please stitch it up? And she's like, of course I'll do that for you, son. Every time you have a hole in your clothing, I'm willing to stitch it up for you. And she did it. And here it is. Years later, I'm wearing it and I like it. And sometimes I wear it and I even get complimented on it. Five dollars. So I've actually done searches on Amazon for five bucks. And sometimes you find cool stuff for five bucks. Not a bad deal, I must say. I quite like deals like that, but I'd rather be freaking dead than wear a Taylor Swift t-shirt. That's no joke. And you know what? Considering everything is a gratuitous copy, like that explosion sound that you just heard, almost everything, not quite everything. This, this bell is not, I'm not copying anyone in particular. I'm sure some people have had a regular bell sitting there before that they ring, but that just is something I did in the past on my own stuff. But the explosion, I like my explosion even better than the one I am copying because this one just sounds more destructive. It sounds like more of an aggressive exclamation point on the end of what I'm saying. You know that's cool. I think it's cool. Whatever. Studio updates today. I did a few things. As you can see, there's one difference from the last episode I I recorded, I put this uh, down here with the owl on the bottom and I put Copy Who on top. Now I feel I feel complete on this side for the moment, for the time being. I just kind of like that when this camera angle is on, whoa, hold on. I've been spending all this time this morning perfecting the shit out of everything and I didn't realize that I had the light shining in that. that these are the things I think about. <laughs> uh, so I, I fixed these, I updated these two things here, I moved that one down to there, and I added this copy who over the backdrop there, and I want to be able to see the name of the show. When someone's watching, they should be able to see the name of the show, like it or not. If you like it, cool. If you don't like it, beat it. Get lost. I don't need you here. You can go and play and twiddle your wiener on TikTok with your little shorts and your little 15-second blurbs in your goldfish mind. Uh, while the world is running away in chaos, being conquered, you can just sit in your uh, brave new world, in your little coffin apartment, in a dense city, with your eye goggles on, uh, ha uh, paying attention to things that amuse you for 5, 10, 15 seconds and moving on to another. That's what you can do. But if you're like me, you like longer form content, you're listening to this, hey, you like this? Put this on in the background. And maybe as you go on and you listen to it, you'll hear something you like. So what I do is very much in the vein of Howard Stern. I like to talk about my life. I like to talk about the things I do. And so this morning, that's what I was doing. I updated this right here. And behind the Rise TV, I, I hooked up another like bar light behind the TV that's even behind that, a 70 inch I have behind the Rise TV. And so it's throwing some light accent on the wall in between the top TV and the lower TV. So you'll see that when I do the rise. But it's like every little improvement 
is a labor of love for me. I want to keep going with it. I want to keep doing it. And right now, see, I just got distracted because I thought, what if my phone rings? And then like, if it rings, all of a sudden what I'm saying will be interrupted and it'll be like dive. It's like a meandering river that is like meandering. And then eventually the curved part of it captures another part of it that has cur car carved through the landscape after all this time. And you can really see these things. It's not even relevant to what I'm saying. But when you're flying in an airplane, you can see the rivers meander. And you can also see where when they carve away on the outer edge, they eventually reach another part of the river. And it's called capturing a different part of the river. And it breaks through. All the water breaks through there. And then you can see where the river used to flow from high up in the air when you're in an airplane. And <laughs> there's no reason for me to say this to you. But you know what I want to do for you now. Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you? Hello. I'm gonna floss. Oh. Yeah, baby. I'm flossing for you. Oh, I'm flossing for me, too. Getting that plaque out of my teeth. That stinky ass plaque. It'll cause some shit like cavities that I don't want. Okay. That's enough of that. We can come back to normal now. I know you love the flossing. There are just a couple little spots in my teeth that, that catch the debris when I'm eating. Here's another semi-copy. It's going to be even a full copy soon where I'm like, I, I literally never used to drink from a cup. But I thought, hey, if I drink from a cup on here, it'll be more of a thorough copy of the person I really take so much from that I copy all the time. And I didn't mean to drop little droplets right here. That's no good. Got rid of that, though. Rub them into my hands. It feels so good getting the moisture into my hands. It's not lotion, but it just kind of feels good because it's water. I hope it's filtered water. I hope there's not fluoride in it. Fucking me up. Mm-hmm. I'm such a copycat. Seriously, I've been looking for a... A one inch wide tray. I've been looking at these brass or gold colored trays where on the inside it's black, on the outside it's brass, to put over here in front of the Rise TV where I want to put a half gallon jug of water. I want to put this cup that I drink out of and and I want to grab my cup from there and like just to, uh, do all these things to copy. Ha I might even have a bong on this tray and I'll have a bottle of Patron. Because the guy I'm copying uses a bottle of Jack Daniels, but I don't want a bottle of Jack Daniels. Whiskey is shit, so I'm going to put a bottle of Patron there, but lo and behold, it's just for eye candy. I'm not going to drink it because I don't drink alcohol anymore, but I, when I did, I used to drink Patron, and it used to make me feel very clairvoyant, so I want to have it there as a symbol, and, and I will have shot glasses because just in case I ever have people in here with me, if they're like, hey, I want to have some fun, they want to loosen up a little bit, I'll like pour uh, some Patron for them. That's all they're, they're allowed to drink here is water or Patron. You're not allowed to have anything that, uh, well, no, that's not true. <laughs> I'm just full of shit right now. But the truth is I am going to get a little tray here and I'm going to put little other props on this table. Hopefully it'll be, tw be between uh, my little Rodney James Dio and I'm not showing it to you right now because I will have a continuity error if I show you that right now. If you want to see Ronnie and Jules and Copy, I got to do the rise. We're almost getting to the point where we're doing the rise. What else is there to talk about? I I've been going about nine minutes. I should really jump into this head first. Should I not? It is fun. Okay, I guess I will. I will just because I want to be able to go to this screen here and I keep referring to things over here. And uh, so we're going to do that right this very F-wording moment. We're going to go bing, bing, booyah, baby. You know what I'm saying? And here we go, my friends. Rise. Look back there where that light is on the wall, that red light. That wasn't there yesterday. It looked more cheap when I did this on Friday. Now, well, but now it's gone. It's all for that two-second effect before this thing goes up. Because I'm progressing towards... Better and perfect all the time. That's the point of it all. Do you understand what I'm saying? Three, four, boom. Yes, sirree, Bob. I do love that. 
It, it, perfection is the goal, little by little, one little step at a time. Like the Overton window, but only for good things. Nearly what? What's going on here? Hey, I'll come back here and go like this. <laughs> hey, I actually... I like that sound. That's kind of cool. That's a cool little effect. Sounds like has an... I didn't know it did that right there. I know I have the devil one here. And I know I have the robot here. So... It's good to know that I have that there as well. Uh, maybe it would even be fun to play with that effect during one of the... Uh, j yeah, this vocal effect right here when I go, rise, and I start doing my... Silly shit. So, back to here. Right back to here. Back to normal. Not bad. Not bad at all. I have something. Uh, it's a brief, extremely brief then and now. It gives me chills, and I have things to say about it. Will you all indulge me while I go to this right here and bring this in for you to see it? And I will open that up and we will zoom in on that sucker. Okay, so this is a then and now of... Uh, I don't know the actor's real name, but this is uh, Matthew Broderick, of course, famous from the movie Ferris Bueller. And next to him is his buddy Cameron from the movie. I don't remember that actor's name, but here he, here they are as old men or contemporary contemporaries, you know. So it's it, this is this is what depresses me about life here. Okay, so here they are looking cool and young. Youth is so cool. I mean, uh, and now. And now looking like super old men. In fact, I kind of feel like my style is actually more cool looking than these guys. Even though they both have full heads of hair, I still feel like I uh, beat them both as far as coolness. And maybe it's because Matthew wears these super dorky uh, suits. I think the dude on the right, Cameron, the guy who used to play Cameron, actually looks better. Uh, so feel sad that they've aged like this. Uh, Ferris Bueller just does not have that, Matthew Broderick does not have that cool young guy vibe anymore. And and that's just what happens when you get old sometimes. I'm afraid that's what's happening to me little by little. Uh, excuse me. But again, I feel confident in my coolness to the extent that I look more cool than maybe at least Matthew Broderick here. Uh, this fella here who plays Cameron, he plays a character on the the TV show Succession now, which which is excellent. He's one of the kids uh, born to the rich magnate on there, Logan Roy, and he is a uh, is it Carter? Car? <laughs> oh shit! How do I not know that? I'm gonna have to look this up because I sound like I don't know what the f I'm talking about. So okay, um, let's look up Succession cast, and we'll come over here. Like so, bring that over for you and take you into this screen right here. And we have his name, Alan Ruck is his name, and he plays Connor Roy. See that right there? Oh, no, of course you don't. So that's him right there, Alan Ruck. And I love this show. Whoa, Nicholas Braun, who is that? Right? Oh, he's the one who plays uh, Greg. Anyway, great show. I recommend that on HBO. So Alan Ruck, I, did, I mean, like, for a billion dollars, you could not have told me that and and made me remember. But anyway, you guys, that was a fun then and now. I, I sincerely wish uh, you guys, you know, what you need to do is, Matthew Broderick, because you have the sort of bloated old man face, you need to cut out carbs, you need to cut out alcohol if you're drinking that, you need to do some cardio. Just get this blubber out on the face. You got to bring out that jawline, bro. I'm always talking about the jawline on here in all of these then and nows. Just take my word for it. I'm telling you, I, I know that uh, which I'm talking about right now. You need what I'm talking about uh, to get that jawline back. Okay, enough, enough, enough. I'm talking too much about these guys right now. So I will remove that from the screen. I just really had the desire to talk about that then and now. I had something else I was thinking about adding on this show as well. But uh, So I have another clip here of... Ms. Malisiris, uh, and we're going to go back to it here by going, Wah. and it is kind of a funny one. Another person decided to take make fun of Miley in this, and we will zoom in to for that. Right that you now. remember anyways. The journey is usually the part that you remember anyways. 
the journey is usually the part that you remember anyways. <laughs> the journey is usually the part that you remember anyways. So the journey is usually the part so that you remember anyway. Like uh, things just catch on fire in our society and all of a sudden everyone is doing their own take on memes. Someone does a popular meme and then all of a sudden it spawns all kinds of other ideas. And like I was saying the other fucking day, I don't think artificial intelligence is going to be nearly as fun or creative with existence. So if artificial intelligence, like in Brave New World, really seeks to make people uh, content uh, satisfying their base pleasures, I don't know yet that artificial intelligence is going to satisfy us as human beings as well as human beings can satisfy human beings in virtue of being human beings by creating intelligent, funny things. Comedy is the domain of humanity, and I'm yet, I'm yet to be convinced that somehow whatever artificial intelligence can do for humanity, it's never going to be as truly funny to people as people being funny to people, which is, again, why you should not murder fucking people to depopulate the world. You're going to be some lonely motherfucking elites, let me tell you. Your humanity's going to be miserable when it's those fucking cyborg motherfuckers lording over all of us. I say the most interesting shit, and in my own mind, I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool what I'm talking about. It makes some kind of interesting sense. Hopefully I have enough here. Uh, okay, so here's another thingamajig. It's uh, some tweeting going on. <sighs> Let's come over here really quick. And so this is uh, just a little bit of... I'll try to explain some backstory when I come over here with it. Here we have... Here we have a tweet from Mr. Ryan Stone. And what's he talking about? He he put up this thing and he... So apparently, Deaf Noodles, who I've talked about on here before, made some kind of comment. Uh, what did Deaf Noodles say? M oh, motherfucker confessing to his... So let's come over here and follow this over here. So what happened was Rolla Tomasi made a, a sarcastic quip about, I can hardly wait to see their OnlyFans when they quit. He's talking about these two ladies who are pilots on an airplane. And so Rolo just made a quip about them being on OnlyFans. And of course it's a joke. And so Deaf Noodles responds, motherfucker confessing to his porn addiction on Maine. L-M-A-O, laughing my ass off. Maine, what does Maine mean? Um, is that some... Young motherfucker lingo that I don't fucking know. Suck my fucking cock, you fucking cocksucker. Yeah, I know. A little bit over the top. Uh, it's true for me to say that. But let's come back over here to this again, and I will return to this previous page. So um, Ryan Stone responded to what Dev Noodles was saying in defense of Rolo Tomasi by saying, uh, LOL, this you assaulting the guy that roasted you at your roast event. So yeah, and I, I responded, I said, in Def's defense, here we go. In Def's defense, that particular event was sabotaged by a certain online personality. A personality I know because he's the namesake of the show, right, copy? Yes, sirree, my little birdie. You know who we're talking about. The namesake of who we're talking about. You certainly, definitely, most definitely, positively know who the mother F I'm effing talking about. Uh, yes. So in that per that particular event, in Def's defense, that particular event where he assaulted this dipshit on stage, and he is a dipshit, that guy's a dipshit, because um, he showed up, that whole fucking event that uh, he's talking about, Def's event, was a comedy roast where uh, a, the other personality on the stage, right, copy? He, he basically got tons of his fans to come and sabotage this event, and it was very frustrating. I watched, I paid attention to the whole thing uh, unfolding online as told by, you know who, you, right? Jules knows who. Hey, Jules, cute little birdie. It's my birdie. My birdie, my small owl there, has jewels on her. Ergo, I call her jewels. Got a problem with that? I don't give a motherfucking shit if you have... So, moving on, continuing. Uh, I, I want to wrap this up soon because I don't feel like this is very interesting. Uh, in Def's defense, that particular event was sabotaged by a certain online personality. It was savage. Funny, though. 
Ryan and Rollo versus Deaf Noodles. Let's get ready to rumble. And guess what? Um, so this was viewed 711 times. Not one single person thought to like my comment because people are on such opposite sides of an issue and they're too cool and they're too fucking whatever to respond and talk and like actually be human and say someone else's name or acknowledge their presence. But thank God. You know why? God bless Ryan Stone for responding to me. He responded to my comment by saying, I'm not Ben Shapiro. I don't fight retards to look good. Sometimes you do, though. Um, and so I put red bars watching, and that pretty much reveals who the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> the guy who sabotaged this event. Uh, so let's just actually look at that clip really fast before I move on. I want to play this clip right here. Red bar, red bar, red oh, there you go. Whoa, why don't I see shit? What's going on? That sounds really noisy, really annoying. So why don't I see any fucking video on here? What's going on? Okay. So this comedian came out and sabotaged the event, and and Def Noodles was understandably pissed. So when he walked out on stage, he pushed this guy over. The whole audience was packed with uh, Red Bar fans, and uh, it was pretty rude. But it was a very interesting sort of train wreck to follow. And so now. Uh, I, I just don't think you are you are out of your league when you're picking on pe some people, deaf noodles, and in two seconds you'll be apologizing for something else because that's what you do. You're like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You should not be picking on Rolo because he's he's actually at this stage much bigger than you are, and he has a much more. Uh, I hate to use the word based now, but I'm going to use the word based because it means grounded. He has a much more based following people who actually use reason. I, I can tell the more I have been paying attention to Dennis from from Deaf Noodles, he's got some crazy stupid shit that he says and supports sometimes. Still makes me laugh, though, on occasion when I watch him. However, I mean on occasion. I, I'm hardly ever watching him these days. Uh, excuse me, because I'm defaulting more, quite frankly, to uh, intellectual cerebr cerebral issues that descend from the manosphere. More interesting. I'm tired. I'm pissed. Because the word base I'm hearing now, there's some fucking asshole at the FBI I'm hearing that it's his job to put people on a list, because that's what they do in democracies, for using words like red-pilled and based. So fucking stupid. The things you guys waste time on as a government. I think that's what they mean when they talk about government being overgrown. Like, the word based couldn't be more of a reasonable word when you understand its usage. So they're like, oh my god, men who use the words red pill and men who use the word based are they're terrorists. They're gonna kill people. Duh. And so it, to me, I, I'm imitating government like that because it's so fucking stupid. And it's so contrary to, like, if you were the president, you'd say, hey, I heard you're doing that. Cut that the fuck out. This is supposed to be, we all call this a democracy, even though a lot of us know it's a republic. But anyway, whatever's democra inherently democratic about it, if there is such a thing, if you were a real president, you'd say, hey, fucking knock that off. The word based is a totally normal word. It means grounded, well-reasoned, reasoning, a solid foundation for what you're talking about. And red pilled, it's red pilled is just being aware of reality. So we want to make a list of people who are aware of reality. It's fucking stupid. And I'm personally so exhausted with that kind of bullshit. Anyhow, moving on, moving on. I don't think that was my most interesting segment by a long shot. Lady, oh, here's another tweet that I thought was kind of interesting that I have some things to say about. Hopefully I can make it more interesting. I'm all pumped with the updates. Whenever there are updates, I'm like, all oh, those old shows, they're so fucking obsolete now because I did those updates and now I don't like looking at the old shows because it's like not as robust visually and creative visually as the new ones. And it's it's still not even a done deal, people. Um, mm. So let us come to, this is titled Lady Christian Shames a Dude is what I called it. So I will come back over here to this and I will bring you to that. And we will, 
We will. Uh, so again, this comes from Ryan Stone commenting on someone. I actually was sitting in a restaurant with my dad and sister yesterday, and I was scrolling because I wanted. I remembered this, and I wanted to find it. So Ryan says, "Women are women. I don't know how much simpler we can put it." Uh, and some, it was a comment with a, a screenshot that says, "Game only works on low quality women." And anyway, where? Um, why is this? Is not. Uh, this is not the tweet that I was wanting. Oh, that's the dude right there, though, huh? Let's see if I can go again. So, born again stab. Oh, I fucking knew it! Chicken ass woman. So this woman, she fucking... I knew it. I fucking knew it. Seriously? Because I thought, this woman looks so silly. This petty woman put a guy on blast that she dated, and she said all sorts of things about how... Um, Oh, I'm annoyed she deleted that because I was like, I knew I should have screen saved it. Damn it. Um, she was putting this guy on blast that she was dating because he seduced her and she succumbed to sinful fornication, not taking um, her own responsibility for her own actions. She felt ashamed of something she did. She felt kind of foolish. Fine, we all make mistakes. But then she... Um, you just shouldn't... And so she, she claims to be such a righteous Christian woman, and I thought, if you were, you would never put someone on blast publicly for that. And so, even though I say I'm Christian, I admit right now, I'm putting you on blast. I was going to be kind about it, and I actually got more fucking annoyed just now when I realized you fucking deleted the tweet I was going to talk about, and so I was going to make you part of my show, and you deleted your shit, so I'm pissed off at you, woman. And so I, I was inclined to believe the guy, because he just very much kindly responded to it by saying my story is my story and um, I just think I just don't think it, it's nearly she thinks he was spinning plates trying to get with her whatever and so um, I just wanted to s say something and uh, read her comment a, a long-winded thing about how um, he's a bad guy she needs to be out there warning other women about him and I'm thinking uh no, you need to have better radar. And she's hot, and she has 20,000 followers, and I'm thinking, so this is why hot chicks... Hot chicks get followers because they're hot, but not necessarily because they're... Oops, here comes this word, based. Not based at all. And so, damn it, she deleted her freaking thing. Chicken, born again, Steph. Let me see, born again, Steph. I'm going to try and find her page right now. Born again, Steph. Hold on. Can I get this off of here? Born Again Steph. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's just bring you to her really quick. See if I can... I got her. I got you. I got you, woman. This is Born Again Steph right here. This is the one I'm talking about. Born Again Christian. Unashamed Bible nerd. She's ashamed of fornicating, and she will blame the men she fornicates with. I understand you want to get with her. Oh, my goodness. Why are you putting this up here? Um, I don't want to see that stuff right now. Um, take the poll. Who should Republican nominee be? The race to be the next president is already heating up. Take our official poll now. Okay. Out of these four people, I'm just going to say Ron DeSantis. Or is this a... Oh, no. I'm not going to another page. You tricked me. I'm closing out of that. We're coming back here to here, people. All right. I'm disappointed still that Born Again Steph deleted her tweet. But actually, I'm not. I would have advised her to delete that tweet, to be perfectly honest with you, because I thought that her behavior was embarrassing to herself. All right, next up, I do have an interesting clip from Denzel Washington uh, talking some wisdom. And so I will bring you back over here. Wee and I will... So you can go home as soon as you finish. Post job. I was a garbage man. <laughs> like Troy, huh. you get eight hours worth of work, but you can do it in huh. three. So you can go home as soon as you finish. Post office, you get three hours worth of work and you make it last <laughs> eight. I did both. I like being the garbage man better. Huh. But uh, they weren't bad jobs. It's like a, you know, people say, oh, the difficulty of making a movie. I'm like, Let's send your son to Iraq. That's difficult. Mm. It's just a movie. It's like relax. Yeah. I don't play that precious nonsense. Dude's oh, got some over. humility get from what here. I hear. You know, your son got shot in the face. That's difficult. I, I think it's an interesting roundtable. Mel Gibson's there. And uh, I think I saw Oliver Stone there as well. I would love to be sitting at a table like that. But they'd be like, uh, dude, 
Who the flip are you sitting here with? A, what have you done, Paul? Hey, you're looking at it right here and now. I wouldn't mind sitting there. And I think I could contribute in ways intellectual that they would probably appreciate. It's a gift. It's an opportunity. And most importantly, it's a gift. Obviously, everybody here is, is talented enough to do that. But don't get it twisted. It's just a movie. It ain't that big a deal. Right. Job. So uh, I actually just appreciated what he's saying, putting life in perspective. He's... He's got some humility because the man worked uh, difficult jobs in the past. And and so instead of being a diva on a movie set, it's pretty cool that he has a, a perspective about it that lends him to humility. What am I hearing? Hearing like a loud uh, car or something outside. I don't know. Uh, I liked that. I wanted to play that because sometimes on and off I've heard him say things that I felt were very intelligent i think he also has a son acting that i've liked seeing in certain things and so more power to that family i think he's a pretty based man that denzel washington there so here's a joe rogan clip uh talking about men being older with no kids i found this interesting hold up so this a is a lot um, of um, men oh, 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 hold on here we go Coming over here again, all right? And I'll zoom in on this, and we'll just check uh, the resolution really quick. 1080p, that is alpha resolution. Doesn't look very clear to me, though, but let's go. Do not have children mm. that are in their, like, 60s uh, and 70s, and they've never had kids, mm. and they're not married, and they're just adrift. It's, it's really sad because these same guys that, like, really valued freedom when they were 30 and 40... Um, they find themselves in this like purposeless existence as their body f starts to fade and yes. fail and they realize like oh especially my God. as life progresses you know i realize that when you're young it's you, you get this perspective that life is just going to be continuing like this that you're going to continue it's deceptive day to day when you're young because you're thinking i look in the mirror i'm young i feel good i'm strong i'm in good health and then all of a sudden you're getting old and you're realizing i should have done certain things when i was younger Oftentimes, I I look at um, my younger self and think I sh I should have sobered up way sooner than I did, and I didn't have I just knew I was tired of drinking and that emotional roller coaster of having to recover after every time of drinking and smoking pot makes it all more of a roller coaster. And when I turned forty, it was shortly after having a child, and I decided I want to straighten my life out, and that was important for me. And there are all kinds of reasons why you should do it. But there is a, there's a really good reason when you want to model that sober behavior for your child. And, and, and I do have my own reasons why for myself that I want to do it. It has to do with cultivating emotional stability. And my point still is, going back to this, that I, um, I think it's important to try and realize wisdom when you're much younger, much sooner. I, I recall huh, in Italy one time, Shit. My dad's old cousin, Biagio, who w is passed away now, he used to have these dogs guarding, I think, these chickens behind my grandparents' house. And the dogs would always bark. They'd be like, rawr, rawr, rawr. So one day when I was 27, I was up behind the house, like, throwing rocks in the direction of the dogs just to aggravate them. I wasn't throwing rocks at them to hit them or anything. I was just aggravating them, making them bark. And then I saw my dad's cousin there. And I was like, fuck. And I dove over this big uh, cement retaining wall into my grandfather's backyard uh, to not be seen because I was being juvenile and stupid. And uh, the way I came down, I just like smashed my knee into the wall super hard and I got an abrasion and, I, and, and it fucked up the way I was walking. I was like limping when I was going to see my friends and they're like, what the hell happened to you? And then I wasn't cleaning it and it wasn't fucking... Uh, and then it was getting infected because it's a humid environment and you got to keep your wounds clean there. And so I started cleaning it. It got better. But my point is, I, I, I hurt myself and I immediately was like, fuck, when the fuck am I going to grow up? And that was about when I was 27-ish years old. And sadly, I wasn't even close to growing up then. And I'm just talking about jumping over a fence. So in life, you make bigger mistakes. Sometimes people make mistakes like get married or drive drunk or marry the wrong person is what I should say. Um, and so uh, 
my point being that if I were younger, you make you make better decisions. So I always wish I got sober younger because you start mat- you mature better emotionally. You become more wise more quickly when you're not indulging in a bunch of chemical shit. And that's how I relate to this, what's being said here. But also if you do that, if you're raising a family and you're doing it right, you have those kids there that you can count on when you get older to take care of you. That's what I'm trying to do with my own parents right now. Whenever they have a need, like I, I jump pretty immediately when they're like, Paul, we need your help. Can you come over? That happens pretty frequently. And it's just like what you do. It's called filial piety. It's respect and reverence you're supposed to have for your parents. But you start getting old and you realize like, shit, I have no one around me. And so I'm 50. I have a friend who thinks I'm too old to have more kids. And I'm like, not really. Uh, It's not even my concern that, oh, I'm too old to have kids now. It's my concern that the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And I don't want to have kids to usher them into an existence of slavery, which I think is um, manifesting for uh, almost everyone. That's our common peril that we're facing. And people don't even realize it or know it. And I get labeled... uh, in petty ways for saying that kind of stuff. But um, I still want to bring kids into this world for good company. There's just this philosophical, spiritual uh, fulfillment you get from the idea of having kids, bringing kids into the world, uh, and knowing that your your line is surviving in one form or fashion, and, and being able to instill those values with them. So this is so just, I, I felt like talking about this because this is something that's really been on my mind a lot lately in this period of my life. But it's like, for me, the hard part is finding a woman who is like the excellent fit. One of many who's a really good, excellent, complimentary fit to me and not complimentary. Oh, Hey Paul, you look good. Complimentary meaning like how we jive together, how we get along. And so that's all that this made me think about. Let's just see if I have anything else to say based on this. This is not a super long clip, but let's keep going. Missed a whole thing in life because I didn't want to take that chance because I didn't want to, you know, yeah. either. And there are a lot of younger problem. people who have that attitude. They're like, um, oh, I'm enjoying myself. I don't want to have that responsibility because it is a big responsibility. It does add a certain kind of stress to your life, this, especially those first years when they're first born. You're incredibly um, disturbed at night trying to sleep sometimes, but you got to help them because they're they're at that age. You got to get up, change their diaper, calm them when they're crying or having night terrors or whatever. I've done all of that myself, and but I want to have more of them. I'd like to have two or three more of them. Ideally, I'd like to have like three or four more kids, which I think is insane. And my biggest fear of doing that is like. I don't want them to starve, and I don't want them to be ushered in, like I said, into the slave world that is manifesting right now. What do you mean, slave world? I'll get to that at some point. Just keep listening. Or I didn't want to lose my freedom, or whatever the rationale was. And all of a sudden, you find yourself in your late Mm. 60s alone. Yeah. You didn't want to lose your freedom. That's just what I was saying. Suddenly, you have kids, and you're like, hey, I used to be able to sit on the couch at night, do nothing, and watch TV. Now I have this responsibility. They're around. I have to watch what they're doing. And it's even more now, even having gone through the experience to some extent, I'm like, oh, uh, the mother and I need to see eye and eye on a great many things so that these kids can be stewarded right in life emotionally so that they don't get sucked into the crazy shit that is all of society now. I'm extremely worried about that most specifically, that secular society is putting kids down a path that is extremely bad for their mental, emotional, and spiritual development. No wife. No fucking screen time, one thing. No fucking public school, another thing. Um, Careful who your kids hang out with. You don't want to go let them spend all this time with other little kids that are getting them into shit. I got exposed to pornography at 10 years old. And I, I've, I've, for the longest time, I've thought that was not a good thing to happen to me at 10 years old. It completely warped my head at that age. And um, I'm still not. A, that's sort of why I say I'm a corrupted person. It began at a very young age. And I'm not Joe perverse. I think on the spectrum of contemporary men, super perverts over here, 
uh, super well-adjusted men here. I think I'm just a little bit closer to the side of well-adjusted, but I'm not saying I'm not fucked up. As my dad says, everyone is just a little fucked up. And that is the truth. And you, you can't have children anymore. It's over. What do you do? Depressing. I mean, maybe a man can freeze your sperm and have kids. Maybe, you know, you can do it. Maybe, but you got to find some young lady who still got eggs. Is willing to let you f her and yeah, <laughs> increasingly that's less a job. likely as you get older. Dude, yes. Oh my god, will. am I feeling that? Don't definitely, definitely feeling that. That, you know. Yeah, I, 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 I'm amazed at how when my wife and I got married, I was not. I was I was indifferent towards having kids. Really, I didn't think it was like, and I was like, yeah. I mean, I guess so. If that's what you want, um, and of course, I feel the same way you do, which is like, you know, most most important thing I've ever done. Most, you know, greatest source mm. of pleasure uh, is actually kids, but not without pain, right? I mean, yes. it's really hard. As you the joy is unbelievable, and sometimes so is the uh, the struggle is real. And that's just part of raising kids. I put my parents through the ringer at stages of my life. And, and at times, I'm still a pain in the ass. And, and so that's the emotional tie you have. There's this uh, friend my dad has named Ron. <laughs> and when speaking about his son once, he said, Children are a bad investment. Financially and emotionally. <laughs> that's uh, it's this dude named Ron. He's from Iran, and he's actually a really cool character that my dad has had in the fold of his life since my dad was in college. Um, don't want to say his last name just because I don't want to divulge who people are and ever have any situation where people go and get bothered because I said something stupid about him. And I wasn't goofing on him. I was just trying to do a an impression. But he did say that about having kids, and I'm like, I get that. And my cousin Mark once told me, a long time ago, way before I ever had a child of my own, um, he's like, dude, you don't understand how much you care until you have a kid. And I'm, I was offended. I was like, what? I'm smart. I'm smart. I deserve respect. I know what you mean. Intellectually, I knew what he was talking about. But until you go through it emotionally, you don't have the experience where you're like, oh, my God, this is my child. I care so much. Um you don't really know until you go through it. And so my cousin uh, is five years younger than me. And, and when we were much younger, I think he surpassed me in wisdom and maturity because I was off partying and he was busy having a family and growing up and working hard and getting ahead. I fucked around a lot, but in some ways, fucking around really was my blessing in life. I played a lot of music, recorded a lot of music, learned a whole different uh, set of skills which have even like become what you're seeing now, starting guitar, recording on four track, recording on an eight track, starting to record on computers, realizing that I could, listening to Howard Stern, then realizing I could record and then like make it into an MP3 and put it online. And then it became podcasting. And then podcasting became like video mixing. There's this fucking line all the way to this. And so I made this choice. Instead of having like a family and just focusing exclusively on making money, I've pursued these creative ideas at the expense of maybe being in a relationship. And now I'm uh, I'm 50 and I'm like, I want more kids around. I see other people with their kids and I, I get so much joy out of little kids when they're like, these little tiny newborn babies look around like they're tripping on LSD and they're like, ah, ah. This world around me, ah! And it's kind of the same face people have when they're on LSD. And I'm, I'm partly being silly, but I'm partly serious, just that it's, it's amazing to see that fascination on their face and the evolution of these kids as they learn, as they grow, as they learn new, more words, understanding the words, using the words, no, yes, uh, signaling with their hands, uh, being able to eat, potty training, learning, reading, learning the alphabet, learning to hum, knowing songs. Knowing how to do things, knowing how to draw. My daughter happens to be an exceptional, amazing artist with what she can draw on Procreate on iPads, and it's really mind blowing. I don't mind the creative on those devices. It's the media influence that bothers me. So if if if, if kids are on there doing creative things, I'm like, that's okay. But it's this short attention span I don't want developed from stupid shit like fucking 
YouTube shorts and TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and all these fucking other stupid things they do that I don't think are good for them. Social media can suck a big ass, but there's a lot of very cool creativity kids can be into on their devices. To raise kids. And uh, I, I, you know, a friend of mine gave me the greatest piece of advice recently, which was uh, something his wife does. Now we have two boys, right? So we have this experience where they're like, and they're feral. Right, like they're full on out of control. <laughs> much, much more difficult than our uh, daughter was. Uh, I, I, I take offense. Uh, that you know what? I'm not taking offense to what he just said, but that word lately, I've heard these girls who were in gyms dressed kind of like super S L U T T Y, <laughs> and they're like deliberately putting their ass in the shot and a man in the shot to show that a man notices your ass because that's the fucking nature of men, stupid. And so then there's this one chick who's like, feral, 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 feral. Oh my God, feral. He's so feral. And it's like, uh, so if he's feral for looking at you, what are you? Not feral for putting your ass out in front of him for him to see it. But anyway, feral, the fucking word, feral. Dude, you triggered me with the world word fucking feral. Back to our regular scheduled program. <laughs> um at least three times a day, they do something that just makes you want to like kill them, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, well, and uh, I don't know. My about friend that. was like, Not "Anytime kill. you are get, you're getting frustrated with them. Just close your eyes and imagine you are 80 years old, and you have a time machine that is bringing you right back to this moment, and this is the only moment you will get with them again oh, when they're young." Wow. That's great. It's awesome. I mean, it's incredible advice. That's very good advice. I like that. Very good advice. And it totally changes. I don't have any idea who that was talking to Joe right there, um, but it was a, it's a good two minutes. It certainly brought a, a lot out of me. I'm like running out of time here pretty soon, and um, it just inspired me thinking a lot about my life. When I saw that clip the other day, I was like, I, th I think I have shit to say about that, and I think it panned out. Sometimes, like right now, I'm not so sure how well this show has gone today. Because there are parts where I'm like, yeah, I didn't like that Deaf Noodles segment. That w that was kind of dulling me out. But here's the last one I have um, with Rolo. I recall liking what I was hearing from this the other day. So I'll bring you over here with that, shall I? Rollo, I like the new design in your studio. I like how you fuck with the lights. I like how you try to improve everything a little bit every other day. In the unity of the Manosphere spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Manosphere, forever and ever. <laughs> it's just the Manosphere. The red pill's just the Manosphere, right, Rollo? It's nothing else. It's nothing beyond that. It doesn't have anything to do with awareness beyond that. It's your niche. It's the Manosphere, and that's all there is. And when you talk about awareness beyond that, that's really much, very much like wearing the blinders around your head, looking through... Um, Looking through a straw, reality through a straw, is thinking that the red pill is just merely the manosphere. <laughs> Losing my train of thought, because I'm, I'm simultaneously being crazy, and then my mind diverges and goes, whoa, you're acting like a crazy fucking moron right now. And then I'm like, what was I saying? I got carried, I got self-conscious is what I did. I'm talking, and then I get self-conscious, and I'm like, dude! You're like going off track. And what was I thinking? What was I saying? And then like right now, I'm I'm like diverting. I'm I'm going on a tangent. And the same thing starts happening when I'm like, this tangent is worthwhile. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. I'm saying this, that, and the other thing about it. And then I'm doing it again. My mind is diverging and I'm like, I really need to come back to this video right now. And we need to listen to what the hell Rolo has to say. Right here, right now, watching the world. That's why you should never self-deprecate, and this is also a uh, an iron rule of Tomasi that nobody wants to challenge for some reason because what? apparently everybody agrees I with agree. it. So I guess Fuck they're not yeah, all worthless, dude. But yes, I agree. I agree. 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 Uh, it's the last one. It's uh, Iron Rule of Tomasi number nine. Uh, apologizing for game is not itself game. I'm and that's sorry. What guys do. <laughs> they they want to incorporate I'm sorry their, for their being own cool. self-deprecation. I'm they sorry laugh for at trying as part of like they think that that's attractive. It goes back to the vulnerability nonsense yeah, as well. Yeah, fuck that. They would never get cocky. They would never want it. Like cocky and funny actually works, but these are the guys that cocky and funny is like a foreign thought. 
But the other way, like the self-deprecation, they think that self-deprecation is a form of game. That's why ergo, or I roll Tomasi number nine, apologizing for game is not itself game. Yeah. But never say you're sorry. Never talk, never call you. Never. Did never... I go too far? I mean, sometimes it's interesting what he's saying. Sometimes when I've negged women, I do a great job. I get a laugh and those women, I'm like, score. I got that laugh. I can totally tell she's into me goofing around like that. It worked. And then, then there are times when you realize, hey, her mannerisms are off. She's not into me. She's doing weird things with her hair and not, and like, if they like you, they're touching you. Sometimes if they like you, they're touching your leg or putting their hand on your shoulder or something. These are all signs to be into. But even if you have a neg that doesn't land, don't be like, I'm sorry. Did I go too far? No, fuck that. Be like, um, I got to go talk to somebody. I'll get back to you. But if she's not into you, definitely bounce, be out, get out of there with, um, with talking to her. But if she's in, into it. You got to try and like um, demonstrate higher value. Even if you misfire, uh, you're not going to. That's how you get good at it, I guess. You got to fail to succeed. So fail a million times. Neg, 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 neg. But negging is not. The meaning of negging is not just purposefully insulting a woman. It's doing it in such a way where if she has the kind of sense of humor that works, she's going to laugh and it's going to play into your favor. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think I'm making perfect sense here. And it's not like I'm the master of it. But if I if I said something that didn't land right, I wouldn't be like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me back up here. No. Uh, we move forward. Excuse me. I got that sausage taste in my throat. And I, I'm recalling now when I have that taste in my throat. One time I was vomiting in Italy after drinking a ton of tequila. And a friend of mine was up. He was like patting me on the back saying, I hope you're okay. And he was telling me, uh, Paul, uh, my friend uh, Marco, when he was uh, vomiting, he, he said, I can taste uh, my uh, dinner and it tastes good. Uh, and that's like, I burped just now and I could taste my lunch, which was pretty tasty. And so that's all I'm really saying. And since I said all of that, I think uh, I'll just floss a little bit. And then we'll come back to Rollo right here after that lovely flossing. Depreciate yourself. Because trust me, there's enough people and there's enough, there's enough going on that's going to deprecate you. God forbid you go and mm -hmm. actually say you, you're, you got your shit together. Uh, I, I have a buddy, a good buddy. I, that's I a 50 think, cent. I'm going to give you 50 cents for the S word. Um, he might have grown out of it, this buddy I had, but he would literally... He really would literally say to women, like, I'm a fucking loser. And I would be like, oh, my God, what? And he's not even joking. He's not saying it for a laugh. He's, like, really cutting himself down. And I'm like, hey, I'm his wingman. What do you think of me hanging out with him? No, but he's a wonderful person who didn't, um, who didn't at the time have a lot of confidence in himself. And I would always tell him, like, uh, like the character in Singles, Vince Vaughn's character used to tell his buddy, played by John Favreau, "You're money, dude. You're totally money. You just don't even know it." And so it's, it takes those guys to help build you up sometimes in life, and good friends will do that for you. But for God's sake, do not self-deprecate like that. No, it's not even just like, um, you know, com some comedians are really good at it. If you can get a super laugh and you know what you're doing. I do think there's a way to angle it to your advantage, but it has to come off as not pathetic. It has to come off somehow like in actuality, the inverse of reality. Is like when I self-deprecate, it really conveys I'm the fucking man and my wit is superpower right now. So I, I think what I just said is insightful and valid, but you know, E.T. phone home, E.T. phone home. E.T. phone home, phone home, stick my finger over Rollo's mouth. Hello, I'm Rollo Tomasi. What do you like to eat for dinner? I like a very manly meal, an alpha steak, medium rare, lots of blood. <laughs> oh, I might have to puppet people's faces like that more often. P 
Paul, I'm saying your name. Say my name, Rollo. Paul, the producer, is some kind of weirdo, and he's trying to subjugate. No, I'm not trying to subjugate you. Stop saying I'm trying to subjugate you. That's not true. If you're going to talk, be honest, Rollo. Okay, I was just self-deprecating at the moment. These newcomers come along and they try to put me down to take my crown in the manosphere. That's uh, not necessarily true either. I just kind of want to be part of the dialogue out here, and I would like it if you'd say my name. But the the premise is that if you the you must become less, so she becomes more. Because if you make her more by saying she's a goddess, she's so wonderful, I can't believe I'm I'm such a schmuck, and she wants to get she would get with me. Oh man, and what a wonderful life it is! I got lucky. Yeah. What that if you want to make your wife I precisely cringe, get the reason, I get the re- what you're saying right now and I see fucking I've seen pastors in church do this where they self-deprecate in front of an entire fucking room of people. And that makes me cringe fiercely. And that's not what a good moral spiritual leader should be doing is like self-deprecating and looking over his shoulder to his wife like she's my better half. Uh, that's really a pet peeve of mine. Uh, all kinds of men do that. And it's like, um, I think there's something to be said for marrying up. Like, you marry the best woman you can, but it doesn't mean that you have to look at yourself as lesser. You build your own value. Think highly of yourself and high standard, and have high standards for the spouse or girlfriend or, or partner or other that you want to get with. And, and like, uh, make them feel like they fucking landed you. Why she's cringing is because hypergamy works the way that it does. Okay. It's there's, she could have done better. Do not ha- women have attraction. She'll think it. she's, she's going to be like, I could have done better. Oh, so if she married you and you're a six and she's a six and you're going, you know what? I'm so lucky. My God, I'm actually a five because I'm a schmuck and I'm a worthless piece of crap. Right. Well, guess what? Now you've gone to a five right. or you made yourself a five and you're confirming that she's actually made now, the worst decision now. she could possibly make. She Not could do better. She literally thinks that, but the subconscious. She could do better. Her subconscious mind is thinking, she, oh my God. He's confirming the fact that I got with a guy yes, who is not yes. as good as I could have gotten. Yes. Oh my Lord. And I'm married oh to this man, guy. I, got dude, I nailed that one. I'm like, I'm ready to graduate from the University of Rolo Tomasi. I'm ready for my honorary degree. Yes, you are, Paul. Yes, you deserve the degree, the honorary degree from the University of Rolo Tomasi. This guy, what am I going to do? That is the same as G-R-A-P-E. G-R-A-P-E? Grape? What are you talking about, Rolo? That's ridiculous. No, it's Grape? not because you got to remember what's G-R-A-P-E. the existential fear of women. The existential fear of women is to be forced into a situation of reproducing with a man that is not of her choosing. There, if she yeah. chose you because she thought you were a seven or she thought you were at the same, like a six, but you also bring yes. a lot to the table. So you, you don't want to paint yourself bit. as lesser ever. You want her to constantly feel like you're the man. You feel like you're the man. You need to control that frame. You need to always project that value being greater. That's that's an insurance policy against your your marriage breaking up. What is he calls it the fear point, the threat point, threshold or something. Oh man, maybe I need to go back to school. Uh, and then you introduce her constantly as being like, I'm a five, I'm a four because I'm a piece of shit, and she's so great. <laughs> if that's I'm not how ever you constantly gonna do that. say, if she's your better half, no, sir. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. She's the prize. Uh, what else, what else did he say? Uh, you know, she, she completes me. She, um, without her, I'd be nothing. Oh yeah. <laughs> that line is straight from that movie, um, with Tom Cruise. What the heck is it? Show me the money. Billy Madison. You complete me. Huh? Um, totally contemporary over idealized Hollywood romance malarkey. <laughs> All the way down to zero and probably How's into the that? negative oh, Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. We go back. Um, without her, I'd be nothing. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, wait, no, hold on, hold on. we got to do one more thing. I'm just playing around with this right now. 
where at playback speed we go like so we go <laughs> man if, if you couldn't play that faster you'd be like what the fuck is he talking about <laughs> all right continue on all the way down to zero and probably into the negative numbers that's the worst thing oh, you too long. can do especially as a husband especially as an L in an ltr agree never all right never what Never, never self-deprecate. If anything, get cocky and say, you know what? Yes, My sir. wife's lucky to have me. I'm going over that. right now. Uh, I like ending on that. I did not even think I'd make it an hour today with all these things. Earlier on, I feel like I'm struggling to stretch certain things. So what I need to do is pack it with more interesting so that if something's not interesting, I can just move on and then reach my hour goal. But so that's it for today. Everyone, ladies and gentlemen, I had a, an eventful hour. I'll play this back in a few minutes and I will see if I like it, how much I like it. I think I do. I think I do like it, but I think I could have done better. I'm so lame. I'm, I'm self-deprecating as a joke now because actually I'm pretty, I think of myself pretty highly. I'm compensating somehow with all this shit around me, improving it all the time. I want to thank anyone who has made it their way through this show today or if you enjoyed something about it. Share this video, like this video, subscribe, tell your friends about it. All of the above, I thank all of you. Peace be with you all. Woe is me! <laughs> I'm just a lucky guy. Yeah, she's my better half. I'm the ball and chain. <laughs>